I tried to upload a video earlier, uh, so unfortunately I'm going to have to make one of those annoying direct uploads. Uh, the upload failed. Um, anyway, the gist of it was I received a PM the other day from a fellow Canadian uh, who was interested in my take on the pessimistic philosophers, and um, he asked me if I'd ever read anything by Emil Kiran, and I said, no, I haven't. Uh, but you know, from what I've heard, it sounds interesting enough. I like pessimist philosophers, even though I don't adhere to whatever they, you know, I usually don't adhere to what they have to say. Um, but, you know, it, it just depends. One man's uh, ambrosia is another man's poison. Um, I, uh, one of my major influences was Charles Bukowski, who was pretty pessimistic or at least uh, jaded in terms of his view of the American dream. Um, fairly sort of negative existential when it came to his view of life itself, but definitely not sort of life is not worth living kind of material. Just the American dream is a complete charade type ma material and he'd rather lay in an alleyway and get drunk on cheap port and get into fist fights with people and chase women that most other people found quite undesirable, <laughs> to put it sort of uh, euphemistically. But, um, yeah, so it, it, the pessimism doesn't really bother me. In fact, I I find it's sort of invigorating in terms of uh, sort of a inoculation. Feed yourself small doses of poison, and when the big dose comes along, you're ready for it. Um, it's, uh, you know, everyone has their own take on how they view things. I find um, um, H.P. Lovecraft actually leaves me feeling optimistic and upbeat about the world. I don't know why. I guess it's probably because I find that it's fairly banal after a certain point, however weird it all gets. You know, once you see the monster that's at the end of everything, okay, the shock wears off, and now what? You're trying to make a horribly empty universe, but you know, after a while it's just a place like any other. Shogoths or not, <laughs> um, Cthulhu or not even. Um, so yeah, I I would love to entertain uh, uh, Kiran. I think I'll give him a read. Um, his works are readily available. Uh, can't find a great deal in English on YouTube. If anyone has any um, ideas as to where I might find a good sort of university lecture type thing on him, like a review or a critical analysis of his work or something like that. I would appreciate that. Uh, Mystic of the Sands, I'm sure you can assist me there, although you have no need to actually go looking uh, on YouTube or for English sources, uh, but um, it's... Uh, if you know of anything in English, I would appreciate it. Um, malgré le fait que je parle français, uh, c'est bien difficile de discuter au sujet de philosophie sophistiquée uh, sans un uh, niveau très haut du français. I just said, I do well in French, uh, but anyone who just listened to what I just said said, you know, they'll, they'll see the imperfections in my French. And if you don't have a good grasp of sort of advanced technical French, you can't really discuss things like philosophy. Uh, that's not my level of French, unfortunately. I can read fiction, but when it comes to nuance, and French is an incredibly nuanced language, uh, no, I need English, I'm afraid. I'm ashamed almost to point that out. Um, <clears throat> if I go to my grave with any regrets, it's that I never completely mastered the French language. Um, <clears throat> But, um, yeah, I, the Romanian tie-in is kind of interesting because I've always liked to sort of imagine being in the Romania of the 1920s with, you know, the Tristan Saras and Ionescos and uh, Mercy Eliad floating around, you know, able to talk to all these people. The Café Intelligentsia of Bucharest in the 1920s, I guess, was pretty impressive um, up there with Paris. Um, I often think of the Romanian intelligentsia, kind of very similar to the French one, uh, just um, over-the-top intellectual, just for the heck of being intellectual, uh, and I really like that about the French. <laughs> that kind of drives some people crazy about the French, but I actually admire them for it. As I say, I'm 
quite uh, slavishly, uh, Frank. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, I had a what looked like a minor family crisis brewing, and I may have had to have hightailed it off to uh, Sweden. And I couldn't help thinking, wouldn't it be nice to put in a little side trip to Bucharest or even northern Romania, where I think somebody I know lives there. <laughs> uh, that'd be interesting to have a conversation over a cup of coffee and, uh, you know, maybe sit in one of the cafes that uh, Kiran himself may have sat in, or, you know, who knows, uh, Iliad or Tristan Tsara. Um, maybe some other time. The family crisis turned to be a tempest in a teacup and staying here in Canada. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Emil Curran, I, you know, I, I, I would find it even interesting to sort of have a hangout or a, or a conference thingy on his stuff with anyone who would be interested in discussing it live. Um, I've never been introduced to him, and it, as as such, I can sort of come at it untainted. Um, but I, you know, I read the Wikipedia thing on him, and. He, they say that he has a sense of humor, which is great, because that's what I always liked about Bukowski, is the sense of humor. Um, yeah, life sucks, it's sordid and disgusting, but pff, ridiculous, isn't it? Um, yeah, so, uh, Emil Kiran, uh, here I come, and uh, I'll report. I'm not really running out of interest in Schopenhauer, but... Uh, his, or my delving into his stuff recently got side-checked by my... Uh, sudden kindling of interest in Kiran. So, uh, off we go.